What's up guys? Today we're going to take a look at the Optoma UHZ-65. The UHZ-65 retails for $4,000 at the time of this video and is the laser version of their UHD-65 lamp-based projector. We'd also like to send a shout out to BH Photo for sending this over to us for review. We'll leave links in the description if you want to check for the latest prices or if you want to pick it up. What we're going to do today is go through the setup and see how good this DLP 4K projector looks in my home theater. And we're going to see how it stacks up against my native 4K projector, the Sony 695ES. But first, let's see what's in the box. Inside, we have an HDMI cable, the power cable, remote control, and some documentation and the batteries. Being a laser projector, you'll get up to 20,000 hours on its brightest setting. It'll be a lot more if you use it on its lower settings. Size-wise, it's not too big. It measures 19.6 inches wide, by 13 inches high, by 6 inches deep, and it only weighs 20.5 pounds. Taking a look up front, you'll see that the lens is non-motorized, and it's got an attached lens cap. On the right side, you'll see those two silver buttons are for power and the input selection. There's also two LED indicators and the exhaust. On the opposite side is the air intake. Up top, you'll find a flip-up door with a dial used for shifting the lens vertically by 15%. There is no horizontal lens shift. And on the right side are navigation controls for the menu. Around back is the power in. LAN, RS-232, two HDMI inputs, VGA in, 3.5mm audio input and output, two USBs, one being for service only, an optical output, and a 12 volt trigger. I should also mention that HDMI 2 is the only one with support for 18 gigabit bandwidth. HDMI 1 is only 1.4 compliant, so if you want to watch 4K HDR material, you'll have to use HDMI 2. For setup, this will be projecting on a Stuart film screen matte white surface with a gain of 1.0. Now let's get it turned on and check out some menu options. Up first is the image settings. Here you can see you have a few picture mode presets. I found the cinema and reference mode look the most natural right out of the box. There's an option for wall color in the event that you're using a wall instead of an actual screen. So there's different color profiles depending on the color your wall is. I'm going to keep it off since I'm using an actual screen. Under dynamic range, you can keep HDR on auto or have it off. For the HDR picture mode, details seem the best for preserving highlight and shadow detail. And then you have your standard picture sliders. Here you have a couple gamma settings. This is brilliant color which will really boost the saturation. For color temperature, I've got mine on D65. Next is color gamut, which I'm going to switch to native. And then you have your color management system. Here you can really fine tune your picture. If you don't have any measurement tools, then I'd probably leave this part alone. And the same for gain and the bias settings. And for color space, I'm just going to keep this on auto. Here we've got ultra detail, which I would keep off because if you turn it up too high, the things start to look over sharpened. And then we have the dynamic black settings, which will dim or brighten the laser to enhance black levels. It's kind of like a dynamic iris on a traditional lamp based projector. Number one I thought was the best looking, with number two being the most aggressive where you can see the brightness fluctuate. This is one of those settings that you're going to find yourself switching back and forth on a lot. Now we have the pure contrast, which will, as you guessed, try and enhance contrast. I found I'd lose some black detail with this when it was turned on. Pure color is another color enhancement feature that you'll probably keep off. And pure motion is frame interpolation, which will give you that smooth soap opera look. I know this says 3D mode, but it supposedly only supports PC 3D and not Blu-ray 3D. 
I did try it with a 3D Blu-ray and it didn't work. I just got that message saying I need to hook it up to a 3D display. Now this is a shame because the projector is extremely bright, which is perfect for active 3D. Next up is the aspect ratio. This is a letterbox mode that stretches out the image, so I would assume this could be used for anamorphic lenses. I didn't try it with mine, but if anyone has used it with one, then let me know down below in the comments. There's edge masking and some digital zooming and shifting adjustments. I wouldn't use any of these digital settings if you value your image. Here is the speaker settings, which you can turn on and off. There is a speaker in here, but it does sound pretty bad. The rest of the settings I'm just going to let play out since they're all pretty self-explanatory, so just hit the pause button if you need to see something. Now, although this is a 4K projector, it's still kind of a 4K projector since it still does pixel shifting. But rather than shifting 1080p, Optoma is using Texas Instruments chip with a resolution of 2716 by 1528 By shifting that, they're reaching the 8.3 million pixels on screen as opposed to 4.1 million by shifting 1080p so you end up with less screen door effect when sitting up close. Okay, let's check out a few video clips. First up is the HDR King for 2019. Aquaman is full of nothing but bright, bold, vivid, lush colors and some standout black levels. As you can see, there's nothing about this that screams that a projector can't look as good as an HDR TV. If you were sitting here with me, you might even think the image was too bright. Remember, a large enough image with a bright screen can seem just as bright as a smaller image with a higher brightness output. It's the perceived brightness. And the Optoma is rated at 3000 lumens. I gotta say that the UHZ65 is one of the brightest projectors I've had in my theater if not the brightest. The sun shining behind Aquaman right here is the brightest I've seen on my screen yet. Highlight detail for the most part doesn't get clipped, but I have seen some occasions that things do get blown out. Take for instance the waves right here in the water. Also I think I mentioned before that setting the HDR picture mode to detail gave the best balance for preserving highlight and shadow detail. Now checking out some darker scenes, I know that DLP projectors aren't the best for black levels, but I think you'll be hard pressed to complain about anything here. I wouldn't say it's as dark as my Sony 695, but it's really close. When there are large peaks in brightness, I do notice that the black letterbox bars will start looking more grayish than black. I don't think that most people would find it distracting, but I think it is worth mentioning. This scene is also from Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Again, just look at the spectral highlights and the deep contrasty black levels. I think this looks good in this video, but it's definitely way better looking in person. As for detail, you can see that it throws out a razor sharp image. If you've ever been to a DLP movie theater, you might have noticed how clean and sharp the picture usually looks. It kind of has a digital feel to it. This to me looks exactly the same as my local cinema. It's clean, crisp, and super detailed. When comparing to my Sony, which is a native 4K projector, even with my face near the screen, I really couldn't tell too much of a difference, if at all. Now, it sounds like this is a killer projector, but of course, there's gotta be some kind of issues, right? Now, I don't know if it's just my review unit or if all the UHZ65s do it, but this thing doesn't play nice with the Apple TV for HDR content. If you look at the orange background here in Blade Runner 2049, you can see huge bands of color. If we back out and turn off match dynamic range, still, it's the same thing. Now let's back out and drop to 420, and still the same thing. Okay, let's back out of this and switch to 4K SDR. And would you look at that, it's all nice and smooth. Now even though it's less noticeable, there is still some very faint banding, but it's nowhere near as bad as before. If we play back the same clip on the 4K Blu-ray, you have to be sure you're set up for Chroma 444, and I also have mine on 12-bit color. Unfortunately, the Apple TV doesn't output at 444, so this could be a big thing for folks using the Apple TV for streaming their media. So, final thoughts. I think for $4,000, the Aptoma rivals native 4K projectors. The biggest differences I saw against my Sony was the boost in overall brightness. Spectral highlights just had more pop. Black levels weren't quite as good, but I really had nothing to complain about. They were close enough. The look of a DLP is also very different. It's crispy and very clean, whereas an LCD I think tends to look more film-like. Just has a smoother overall appearance. I'd personally be happy with either technology, but I know some folks prefer one over the other. 
The lack of 3D Blu-ray support is kind of a bummer if you like 3D movies, so that could be a deal breaker. As for detail, it's way better than any other 4K upscaling projector I've seen from Epson or JVC, and it's right there with the Sony. I mean, you are getting 8 million pixels on screen. The only big issue I had was when I tried to use the Apple TV. That is my go-to device for streaming Netflix or if I just want to watch myself on YouTube. Though if you're using a Blu-ray player or some other streaming device, then you might not have any issues at all. So I think the lowest priced native 4K projector is the Sony 295ES, which I believe is like $5,000. This is $1,000 less, is way brighter, and can throw out an image that is just as detailed. If you don't need 3D Blu-ray support and want that premium big screen 4K experience at home, I honestly can't think of another projector that's going to look this good. Again, I'd like to thank the guys over at B&H Photo for sending this over for a review. If you guys want to see this thing in person, you can always check it out at their New York location. Or if you guys just want to check for the latest prices or if you want to pick it up, I'll leave some links for it down below in the description. So what are your thoughts on the UHZ65? I know it's been out for a while, so I'm sure somebody out there has got it. Let me know what you think of it in the comments down below. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to follow us on social media. And if you want to support the channel and get exclusive updates and deals, you can stop by our Patreon page. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys again in the next one.